Hello everyone, today we wanted to quickly show you one of the new features that is coming with JEP Decompiler new major release version 4. We are introducing an experimental system of signatures to identify common native libraries. So let's take an example. Here is a sample of the QuackBot malware family that I just opened in JEB. So here we are on the entry point. And if we look at the navigation bar on the right, uh, we can see that some parts of the code have already been identified as being library code, but the cyan area are here. And this is actually the Microsoft Visual Studio C runtime but there is still a large chunk of code that is completely unknown and that's the large blue part here so we need to analyze it and if we start by looking at the strings uh, we will actually rapidly find out that there are a lot of strings and that there are two libraries that were linked in the binary there is curl and you can see the name pretty easily so for example let's search for it there are some libcurl reference and there is OpenSSL. So this is a very common situation when doing malware analysis. OpenSSL and libcurl have been put into the binary. And of course, we do not want to analyze this library code because these are very likely a modified version of the original libraries. We are only interested into the malware code. So we need a way to identify the library routines. So from the strings, for example, let's navigate to some OpenSSL routine. Let's say the RSA implementation here. So we got some string related to RSA. So this routine referencing the string is very likely part of OpenSSL code. We do not want to analyze it. We want to automatically identify it. And the usual solution to that is to uh, compile the library ourselves, and we know the version of OpenSSL from the strings, such that we can generate a binary with symbols, and then from this binary, we create a signature for this routine, uh, such that it can be renamed in QuackBot with the OpenSSL name. Now, what do we put into the signatures to identify this routine? Usually, such signatures rely on the code of a routine, that is the machine instructions here, or the assembly instructions, or maybe the control photograph. And that's actually exactly uh, how Jeb is able to identify the C runtime here. But for open source libraries like OpenSSL, the problem is different because the libraries were compiled by the developers themselves, the malware developers themselves. So they are not provided in an already compiled form like compiler libraries. So to create useful code signatures for the open source libraries, we need to compile them in the exact same way as the QuackBot developers did. That is, we need to have exactly the same code. And finding out which compiler, compiler version, compiler optimization were used uh, in the malware is doable, but it will be a tedious and time-consuming task. And even after all that, the signatures we will get will only be useful on QuackBot because it is very likely that the next malware family we will be analyzing with the same libraries will have been compiled with a different compiler. So it's a lot of efforts to create code-dependent signatures for a small return. What if there was a way to generate signatures that do not rely on machine code or even on a control photograph, which can be different depending on the compiler version and optimization? Then such signatures would be independent from the compiler and even from the actual architecture, and hence would be reusable on any binary. And that's exactly what Jeb Codeless Signatures libraries are about. So Right now, we do have signatures for a bunch of op open source libraries like curl, uh, OpenSSL, Zlib, LibSSH2. Uh, so let's apply these uh, signatures on our QuackBot sample. So first thing first, we need to find out which version was used. So OpenSSL is 102R. So we're going to apply the corresponding libraries here. And notice that there is uh, nothing here mentioning uh, the compiler or the architecture because it does not matter. These signatures could be applied on any binary. So you can see that there is some cyan appearing here. And now we got the result. So uh, as you can see on the right, 
uh, there is a large chunk of a binary that is now being identified uh, as being a library code. And here in the results, we do have the exact memory library range uh, that should be considered OpenSSL. Within this range, we identified around 60% of the routine. That is, we found a unique name in OpenSSL for them. But then we do have uh, some routines for which we have a few names, less than three. And usually this, this is enough to understand the purpose of a routine because these are very uh, similar library routines. All the other routines in the library, that is around 30%, have been localized. That is, we know they are part of the library, but we do not have a specific name for them. That's the remaining blue parts uh, that you can see here. So this is one of the trade-offs we made to create such compiler and dependent signatures. Some routines will not be precisely identified, a lot should be for, and almost all of them should be localized. And we think it is enough, especially when you do not care about the internals of the library, like when you do malware analysis. By doing this trade-off, we build signatures that can be used whatever the compiler is, whatever the architecture is. So for example, notice that the routine we were on has been uh, identified and so it has been renamed as being part of the OpenSSL package and a sub package has been created with the name of the OpenSSL module and uh, we got the routine name here. Uh, also notice that we got the exact prototype with OpenSSL types applied to the routine. So that will help when decompiling the code uh, because we also generated type libraries for OpenSSL. And so we got a package that has OpenSSL package and a lot of sub package corresponding to modules with all the identified routines here. So let's do the same thing with libcurl. Let's find out which version was used. 747.1. So we do the same thing. We apply the signatures. 747.1 is here. And you can see the cyan area building up here. So we do have a similar results, so library range. We identified almost 60% and we have 10 more percent almost identified. So you can see looking at the navigation bar, the actually the, the only part that still needs to be analyzed is on the top here, that's the malware code. So if we go, for example, in this malware code and search for some, let's say some curl code, we're going to find out some call to curl. So this is the malware using curl. And you can see here a routine that has not been precisely identified. When this happens, we actually put the names of the candidates in comments here. So it should make the analysis pretty easy. Let's search for more, some, some more code. OK, here, let's decompile this, for example. And we do have. Uh, the pseudo C code here, and you can see all the call to curl, and it should make the analysis really easy because right now you you only have to read the documentation for curl routines. So, for example, this is setting the user agent of the malware here, and you can see we have the strings because we do have uh, the exact prototype for this uh, curl routine. So, at this point, you might be wonder. How is it working? Of how these code independent signatures uh, are working internally? What are the limitations? What is the false positive ratio? Uh, so, spoiler, it is usually in our experiments less than 2%. So, we will describe all this in an upcoming white paper that will be published on our blog. But in the meantime, I really encourage you to test JEP codeless signatures on various architectures, compilers, and do not hesitate to report feedback to us. It is still a work in progress and it is, we intend to provide signatures for many more libraries in the following weeks. So enjoy!